Hi all, uh, I had a fun project idea that I wanted to share with everyone um, and it's about using Whisper. If you haven't heard of OpenAI's Whisper, it's an amazing program that can do speech to text very, very well. It runs on a GPU, it's been trained on over 680,000 hours. It can do real-time transcription, it can also take um, a lot of different languages work out what language it's in and convert it into English but I was quite keen on seeing if I could create a telegram bot to be able to take messages that I've had uh, voice notes that I've had sent to me on whatsapp or telegram and convert those into text so I could read them a lot of the time uh, I don't get to those messages as quickly as I'd like I get the call to action on my phone I go and I look at it and then I can't see anything further um, so I was thinking if I could take that and speech to text it that would be an amazing way for me to get value out of that a lot of services do actually provide that now I know telegram and their premium I believe is able to con transcode audio uh, into text um, but I'm quite keen to see if I can do something for free and so a little bit of internet sleuthing since open AI Whisper requires a GPU to run. There's actually ports of it that run on uh, CPUs and due to the way that it's set up, it has different sizes of models uh, all the way from something that can run on a Raspberry Pi to your supercomputers. Um, and this version here uh, allows you to run uh, on a under a one gig system, the base model. And like there's a bit of stuff that's been done to it to convert it. But as far as I can tell, it's not very different at all and it works really well. It's even got a little command line for FFmpeg to convert whatever you have into the format that it uh, takes, which is uh, PCM, I think 16-bit WAV file, uh, and it encodes that for it, and then you can put that into it. These are all the different models you can use from tiny, base, small, medium, large, um, and you can see the different memory requirements. So. I went with the base model for my uh, testing and it's all worked fine and yeah let's dig into it so first things first demo uh, this is my telegram account and let me send something here the curse of the live demo let us see if this will work so now this uh, telegram message has been sent and it will be, be being processed by my Raspberry Pi. Uh, I'm going to log into the Raspberry Pi here and bring up a terminal. Uh, let's tail the logs. You can see the last couple of <laughs> messages. So since we're tailing the log file, hopefully in a second we'll have something there and we'll have it in Telegram. There we go. The curse of the live demo. Let us see if this will work. The curse of the live demo. Let us see if this will work. And it looks like it did. That's perfect. Okay, so we can come back here. You can see my test was run. Curse of the live demo. See if it works. So this is a 29 seconds of processing um, for my user and it was successful. Uh, and it was a six second clip that it converted for me. So let's talk a bit about the bot that I created. So the bot, as I mentioned, is a Telegram bot. Uh, this was really cool. So all I had to do, you go speak to the bot father on Telegram. Um, come on, where's the browser? And once you talk to the bot father, he'll enable you to create a bot. And once you've got your bot uh, key, you'll get something like this. And you can put that in to your application. Uh, and that's enough to actually start running a Telegram bot. So I've used the Python libraries. Um, Telegram Python bot. <laughs> Uh, it's a Python Telegram bot, that's it. And so I've installed that library and I've got a couple, a little bit of helper code. So this is basic Python logging I've added. Um, and then we'll see in the main. Um, 
just check to see that everything I need is defined. If it's not, I exit, otherwise I'll start the application up. I pass in my application key. What's really cool for coding something like this, I've set an environment variable. So if I ever upload this code onto GitHub, it's fine, none of my secrets are encoded yet. It's all just sitting on the box as part of my setup configuration. In addition to that, I've put my chat ID in there so that I can send myself messages for processing. Um, and then this is just the basic startup code. So once we have the application that's built up, I add my handler um, and that's pretty much it. So after this, we need to uh, have something. So I've got the message handler. This is able to take an attachment um, and I'll handle that attachment. If we go look for handle attachment, we can go into the code. So I can get the username from the message request, the chat ID, I do a bit of performance logging. So start time and end time gets logged mm, somewhere. <laughs> um, and then I need to get the file ID. Uh, what I do is um, I get the file. If it's less than 50 megs, I'll process it. Um, if it's more than 50 megs, that will be the end and I'll fail processing, send a use user message to say it's too big to process, 50 meg limit. Uh, otherwise I do the duration check. This is currently sitting at 650 seconds. Um, but I could probably put this lower, higher. It's not a lot of usage at the moment on it, so it's actually fine by me. What happens is you send in your file and if it gets the duration from the attached media, uh, and it doesn't, it exceeds what this defined limit is, it won't be able to process it. And if there's any exceptions getting that, then I'm just gonna assume that it's not a audio or video file that I can process. One of the optimizations I did, I'm running this on a Raspberry Pi 4 2 gig um, with just a S, SSD, SD card um, in it. So I figured if a lot of people are using this, it's gonna end up being a lot of traffic coming through uh, and that would cause issues potentially with wear and tear on the, the SD card. So I just created a, a 512 meg RAM drive, uh, RAM disk, and I can put the temporary file for processing in there. Uh, initially, I had hoped there would be Python bindings for uh, Whisper CPP, but in my kind of playing around, I didn't find anything that would let me use it from Python directly. So I just uh, run a bash script that will do my commands and take a look at the commands here. So it's very similar to that ffmpeg command to convert it into the format I want. One of the cool things about this is it's able to take a, a video file, audio notes, uh, recorded audio uh, and convert it into the specific wave format required. And then I just run uh, whisper cpp main example and I just output into a text file the text file will be named with whatever the wave file was .txt. So I've got a defined input that I'm putting in $1 and I know that it's going to be $1.wav.txt uh, on the other side of that. So once we're done processing, uh, we'll run the command, we'll wait for the command to complete and then I can open that .wav.txt file. I uh, just read the text and if it all worked out, I can just send a message directly to the user uh, with the text that I decoded from the message that they sent me. Um, and then just a tiny bit of logging. Uh, every username just gets their counter updated and stored using a really simple Python database called DBM. Um, it's kind of just like a Redis key value store. Um, and then finally, I also send myself just the log line, as you can see here, uh, how long it took to process, who I processed for, and the success counter. The bot itself is called Spot. <laughs> it's quite a mouthful, uh, but you can see that it's available to anyone. And that is a quick demo of that. Another interesting thing, so, I mean, I was thinking 30 seconds of encoding for a six second uh, audio snippet is, is quite bad. Um, so if we take a look at the actual open Worcester code, 
in the main. Um, so I'm running this every time and every time I run it, it has to load the model, has to start up, it has to process. And I thought that was adding a lot of overhead. Um, so I did take a little segue and I built another project, uh, which was pretty much the same project as that main, but I tried to start it up and have the model loaded in memory and, uh, and I was hoping that just passing in additional wave files would be faster for processing. I uh, found an amazing library for writing C++ uh, REST APIs. It's a single file header solution. It's called Crow. CPP.org. It's very cool. Uh, I was honestly surprised with how easy it was considering the thoughts around C++ and C and how hard it is to do certain things in the new modern world but actually with libraries like this I mean you're flying uh, this was really easy to get set up and run and so I moved a couple things around and I tried to instantiate uh, whispers.cpp once off so just kind of get it running load up all the context it needs and then do the process only do processing on the wave file and I found out that it didn't actually make much of a difference. So without digging a lot more into the code, I, I'm not quite sure how I'd be able to optimize this more. Um, so generally, like kind of just a stock standard version of Whisper CPP downloaded onto your box and compiled. It'll download. It's got helper files to download the model. They talk about it in here. Uh, wait download so there's bash files that can help you download the model you want to use um, and then uh, compiling is just basically a make so that's very cool let us see um, other things we can potentially do I could send a video um, I don't have <laughs> I won't be able to send a video with currently using this wedding camera unfortunately but you can also forward messages. So one of the things I like to do is if I get any voice notes now, I forward them from uh, WhatsApp to Telegram spot and then it will transcode it for me. And then I've got the opportunity to reply to the person without ever having to actually listen to the message. And so, yeah, that was a quick run through. Um, let me see if I have an audio file that I can pass into it. not wasting time um so yeah this is just a simple run through simple project it's basically running on a stock uh pi 4 i have it sitting down in the corner it's got a network cable attached to it and it's got power plugged into it uh and that's it it's going to sit there running 24 7. it's not using a lot of power and it's not using a lot of internet so for very little effort and very little time i've now got my own speech to text uh application running and if you want to give it a try i'll put the link to the bot in the video uh, quite keen to see a lot of people give it a try it doesn't seem to fail very often um, it just needs the processing time to catch up so whoever sends it a voice note it's going to uh, process synchronously one at a time so if it had a thousand voice notes pending it should actually make it through it it doesn't have to download them all at the same time or process the messages sequentially as it's able to and it will eventually catch up so yeah I'm looking forward to a couple people giving this a try and letting me know what they think about it uh, yeah fun little side project um, and pretty much I displayed all the code and managed to put this together in a day or two so I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did and if you made it to the end of the video uh, please send it a couple messages I'd love to uh, just see it actually working. I, the text that was outputted, you'll see that that was for my username. Uh, so if we go back up, handle message. So the message that gets sent to the user is here. So this is the person who sent the text, the message to Spot, and then the message that gets sent to me is just the processing message yeah so i have an idea of whether it's working or not cool thanks a lot for watching and i'll see you on the next one